Welcome to CAS 133, Columbia Gorge Community College, the Dallas, Oregon, Mrs. Hewitt instructor. Now, this video is going to walk you through kind of the beginning of the class. So you've just logged into CAS 133. You've arrived on this page. Now, the page may look like this when you arrive. There are two, two shells, two versions. They're basically exactly the same class, except that the orange one is taught by two instructors and is kind of a hybrid class and it's not offered as often. In fact, it's offered very, very infrequently, but that shell does exist, so you might potentially end up using the orange shell. Really, the only difference between the two is the color. So, what do you need to know about Moodle? Well, you have things along the side here. You can open them. You can close them. You can retrieve them. Put them back over on the other side. Things that you hide over here tend to show up. Things you hide from here tend to show up here, so you can put them back over. So you can kind of customize that part of Moodle. Some people like to have the navigation over there, so you can add that over there. There are a lot of different things. Then you can open and close those even from there. So that's a little bit about that part of Moodle. So you can make it look a little bit different. Um, to fit your needs and what you like and what you use. Most of these over here are basically shortcuts to other things you're going to find straight down the middle of the course. Now this shortcut right here will take you in and show you the assignments. It will show you basically a screen that looks something like this that says when they're due, those types of things. Now one of the things that I can do that might be helpful is under admin I can switch mine to look just like a student sees. So I'm going to switch this to a student view so you'll see it instead of in the instructor view. And then, again there's not that many changes. You still see basically the same thing we were looking at. When you open the assignments as a student though you see a little bit different. You see whether you have submitted it. So this is a nice place to look did I turn that in? I did it. Did I submit it? I can't remember. And then this is where you'll see if I am when I grade it. Your grade should show up in there. At least that's one place you'll see information. There's also grades under the individual assignments and feedback. Now I only include feedback if there are issues. And so anytime you have feedback it's going to be really important to read so you don't keep making the same types of mistakes week after week after week. This is a toolbar along the top. You can use it to get back to where we were. Of course, sometimes back arrow just gets used too. So as you go down through here, you need to read this. This is written here for your use, not just to practice my typing. So you're going to need to read that. That's important. Once you've read that, you now have my email address. You come in here, you're getting ready to get started for class. Hope you're kind of excited about getting going. So you're going to read watch start here. There's a PDF on class information. All those types of things are really good to check out. Make sure you know the material. It's going to be the answer to most of your questions. So what do, what do you need? What do you have to have? You know, what do you, what's the expectation for logging into Moodle, which is you're checking Moodle at least once every 48 hours. That's an every other day situation. Anything longer, you're at risk for missing important announcements. You'll continue checking information about this. You can meet, meet me here. Class syllabus is really important that you read. You know, in face-to-face -face classes, the instructor, at least they used to, and I think a lot still do, stand up there and literally read the syllabus to you the first day, word for word. Nope, not doing that. So I expect you as college age learners that are taking this class because you'd like to be here and would like to learn are going to take care of reading that syllabus on your own. If you don't, you're going to have surprises on through the term. Like for example, you have to have a passing project out of each subject we do, out of Word, out of Excel, out of PowerPoint, or you won't pass the class. You have to pass the access project with at least a C or if not, the highest you can get is a C. There are little things in there that are important to know. 
and you may regret not knowing later on. So please read that. The Course Content and Outcome Guide, grading information. That's going to solve a lot of questions. Extra credit. People will write emails to me say, can I do extra credit? Mm-hmm. Read the extra credit link. It'll solve that. Late work policy. Can I submit this now? Hmm. Have you read the late work policy? It was due a month ago. No, you cannot. Late po work policy is pretty simple. You have one week to turn work in. It's due on, Friday, on Saturday night of each week. For this class, for the hybrid class, that may be adjusted based on when the class actually meets physically face-to-face. -face. So please um, kind of check the course shell and check the syllabus because it will say what the current um, date and time of work being due is. The fully online class, the blue one, probably doesn't change. The orange one very likely will change. After that, you have one week from that date to the next time. It's late work and it can be submitted during that late work time for the actual assignments. You cannot submit forms or journals during the late work week. Those are just done. You lost the points. After that, the only way I accept late work is major life events. Uh, you've got somebody like your child, your parent, your spouse in ICU, in the hospital. They've been life flighted to Portland or are having, you know, major open heart surgery. You've got somebody deathly ill. Um, you know, major events, car accidents. I mean, like more serious ones, not just a little, I backed into a post, I dinged my car accident. But the major ones that really take you out of being able to do anything in life. Unfortunately, we all have those events happen in our life occasionally. If something like that happens, get a hold of me. I may ask for proof. I may ask for the funeral announcement. I may ask for the admission papers or something like that to prove that this is truly going on. Unfortunately, there are a few that will try to con. Those types of things, I will definitely give you extensions. Vacations, no. You need to, if you're going to take a vacation, and I do while I'm teaching, you need to make sure you're going to have good internet and can be working on your class. Um, you've got kids, they're home from school, they've got the, <laughs> that you know, unfortunately goes around. I taught for 31 years in a public school. I know, I've been there, I've done that. Um, got my own kids, thank goodness mine are now grown, but I've got grandkids. I understand that most of that isn't so serious that it puts you out of doing work. The first two weeks you can do without having Microsoft Office or the book. So please don't skip the first two weeks with the excuse that you don't have the materials. If this is your first online class and you don't know the ex expectation for online behavior, read the netiquette. I've had students write me emails that I doubt they would have ever said to my face in a class room type setting. They were very rude and that's not how you make points with the instructor to get your way. A uh, little honey goes a lot further, believe me, than the vinegar does. Calendar due date, assignment sheet if you want to print it off. The instructor's form is where I post things and there are things that change in the middle of a class whether I like it or you like it, it's just how it is. Huh, Microsoft took that picture away. Okay, I've got to find you another one. I post it there and tell you what I've done. You need to be reading those every single time you log on. Moodle's supposed to send you an email, but please don't trust Moodle. I don't. Coffee shop is more um, student to student. That's, I need a ride. Can we put a study group together? Don't put a class question in there. Don't post, I don't know how to do project, whatever it is. Does anybody else? Because they're probably just as confused as you are. Ask me. I'm the one that knows how the project's supposed to be done. Send me an email. There's some tutoring. It's not necessarily face-to-face. Um, -face. In fact, it's going to be an online situation. Ron Watrous in the library will help you as well if you're stuck with, like, how do I get Moodle to work? I don't know where my assignments are. I don't understand how this works. He is more than willing to help you with that. And his information is down here. He's kind of the tech help, but he's willing to also kind of get you pointed in the right direction, like click here, click here. Having trouble getting Office installed for the class, yep, he'll help with that too. So these are kind of your support pieces. 
You've got PowerPoints in here that have sound. They're not lectures. Please listen to those as well. Here's how you get sound going. Now the first videos, there's a video for every single week. The first videos are much, much longer than the last ones will be. And so given that, please listen all the way through, but know that as you get to like week four and week five, they get really short compared to the first few. Now, the very first thing you have to do is you have to read this academic honesty policy. You have to click on this link and then click on this link right here and go take this test. You need to put your first and your last name in it when you enter it. You need to put your email address. I suggest you copy and paste my email address. It is right here. Notice I switched shells, but it is right here. So it's easy to get and have a copy sent to me so I can give you a grade. If I don't give you a grade right here, as soon as it gets back there, you will know I did not get it and you can forward me your copy. It only allows you to take the pretest once and the post test once. So please make sure you make the appropriate arrangements for getting those copies by putting the correct information in. And by the way, Michelle or Sam or Sally, how many Sams or Sallies might I have out of 60 students in a term? I've had two Karens in a term or two Kaylins. So please put first and last name and use the last name that you were registered in the class by. If you've just married, divorced, changed your name for any reason, please make sure you're using the one that shows up in CGCC's records. Video on cheating is the next thing you watch and then you take this little six question quiz. All of this must be done by 8 o'clock the first Thursday of the term, otherwise you're considered a no-show and will be dropped from the class. My luck at allowing no-shows back in has been miserable, like one out of ten have passed after that. So I pretty well have a, a tact of not allowing you back in because you were taken out for a reason. If you cannot get that done for a good reason, please contact me ahead of time. You have your first form, you have to introduce yourself and respond to one other student. Then let me talk a little bit about how the weeks are laid out as you get into each week. The week is right below that intro. You have additional support material each time. This is optional, but it's the stuff that I think you could get stuck on that you might need some extra support on, and I have it there already. Then you have the instructional materials. These are your lessons. These are your textbooks. These are your lectures. They always start with a video and then they have other materials to go with that. You need to access each and every link. They open by clicking on them. You now access that link, you wait for the video, and you watch the whole video. By the way, I can see exactly what you open and when you open it. So if I see something like this, this is my clock on my computer says 345. So if I say, go in there and I look and I see this, it says, Okay, she opened this at 345, she opened this at 345, she opened this at 345. That needs to be moved, by the way, I'll move that. She opened this at 345. Obviously, you didn't look at anything. You didn't watch anything. You didn't really access the material. You just clicked through. And then you have your assignment submissions. Now, when you're going to submit an assignment, just so you know how to do that, so that there's no questions, I clicked out a teacher and I'm back. I need to get back to student again so you can see that. When you get down there, you're just going to go down to the link that says, Oh, I'm supposed to upload my WordPad. Now, when you watch this video right here, it will give you specific directions about the actual work. This is an overview, but I want to make sure you know how to upload. I'm going to open that link. Oh, it's already closed. I can't do that one. Let me go to a current week that's open. So I'm going to open this link. I'm going to have my work already done. It'll have the ad submission. And if you're too late to turn the work in, that ad submission box will be gone. You missed it. You messed around or whatever and didn't get her done. Then you're going to get down here and you're going to find the work you want to upload, whatever that is. Go to drag it over on top. That means using your mouse and your mouse key to drag and drop. 
it's going to go through that process. You're going to see the little green bar. It's going to spin around and you're going to hit the save changes. Now, let's say you uploaded that and as soon as you uploaded it or even later you realized you have the wrong work. <gasps> That's not the assignment. This is the word pad and I put my paint picture there. Eek, heaven forbid. I made a mistake. I'm going to click edit submission. Oops. That would be good if the internet was cooperating. Okay, now the internet caught up with me, so now I have my picture here. If I just click on that, it allows me to delete it. And then I can go back over and repeat the process, find what I want, and go ahead and drag and drop and save the changes. So that's basically how you get a project uploaded in Moodle. Now it's going to complain because I haven't put anything there. But that is the process you need to do if you have to upload something a second time. So what types of things make you most successful? Well, reading everything. Open the link, read the material. Open the link, read the material. Not just click, 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 skip, 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 skip. Next thing, watching this video. That is just basically critical for being successful that week and watching it all the way to the end. The first ones are too long, but that's what it takes to try to show you everything you need to know for a whole week with stuff you've never done. Then they speed up because you know how to do half of it already or more. What else is critical? Getting your work done on time, getting your Microsoft Office access figured out, whether you're going to use 2013 and buy the new program at the college and get it installed, you need to do that before the beginning of week three. If you're going to try to use 2010 or 2007, be prepared for having to work a little bit harder, but it can be done. It's just a little bit more challenge on your part. And you have to be willing to recognize that what you see on the screen may not match your book exactly. Last and not least, going back, checking your feedback, doing your corrections, checking Moodle, being on often, being actively participating in the class by checking in, following along, and checking instructors' forums. All of those will help you be successful. Emailing me if you have questions, concerns, or problems, but remember mostly if you watch the videos and read the material, you're going to be good to go.